Olympic pistol shooting is back in Britain. We visit the newly revamped Chelsmore range. We've got our roundup of what's happening at Bisley in the next few months, and it's the last day of the Trafalgar meeting. Welcome to NRA TV. Until this year, Britain's Olympic pistol shooters had to train overseas. The 1997 restrictions on handgun ownership made it hard to build a secure enough range. Well, the NRA, with a little help from their friends, has solved that at Bisley. It's not just a fortress, it's a proper range with proper targets. So these are the targets we have when we go to internationals and to have them to train on whenever we have squad training weekends is just awesome because we're training on tailing targets which is just totally different to how you actually compete. It's not just the targets, it's the convenience too. Where I live on the Isle of Wight, so coming up here isn't that far. So to come up here every other weekend if needs be, it's local, to, I quite call it local, you know, an hour, an hour and a half from home. So for me, it's perfect. It's within driving distance, hop on the ferry the first thing in the morning, I'm up here by nine and I can train all day. The help the NRA had came from the army, which part funded the new range. Ian Jack is a soldier who is also in the GB pistol team. Basically, it's a joint venture. So um, <laughs> obviously, we've got ten targets in total: five bought by the NRA, and then uh, five bought by the uh, the army. So that the army, uh, because we have this uh, this joint venture, which is uh, part of troops to target. Given um, the fact that, that you know the likes of uh, the Heather Stanning, uh, you know the successes that the military have had at both the Olympics and the Paralympics, trying to um, to emphasise and build on that. They're, uh, they're trying to look for people who have the attributes that would make it to the likes of the next Commonwealth Games, the next Olympics. One of those people is Steph. Well, she hopes. I definitely have the capabilities in me, but it's all mind game and the hard work. I've definitely got the hard work, it's just whether it all comes together on the, on the day and I get a quota place which everybody is fighting for. For Steph to get to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics as part of Team GB will require a massive amount of training and competition. I try to train three to four times a week during the week, but that's obviously incorporated with my studies. And then most weekends we do training weekends of some sort. Looking at this, from the ground roots we've got like a concrete bed that we can stand on. Um, obviously we've got the electronic targets which have the actual ISSF red light, green light for start. Not only is it time saving, but it's also training in the method and the techniques that you're actually going to be expected to compete at, at international competitions and not trying to make do with with the best situation that you have so obviously this has taken it literally to the next level we catch up with another team GB shooter Savannah Foster who is on Melville range competing in the army pistol competition she too is delighted about the Chalesmore upgrade being a pistol shooter and hearing that and and to discover that news and to have the facilities in place is is amazing news really um, and you know like um, other target pistol shooters, you know, the, the difficulties we have with the handgun ban in the UK, you know, that brings issues with trying to get range time and um, with the rules that are in place. So to have these ranges available to us, it means a great deal because we can actually get the range for time that we need to, to become the best shot um, and to, you know, be more prepared for Tokyo 2020, which is ultimately like the main thing here. So um, it means a great deal to us. Until a few weeks ago, uh, we had very basic facilities available to us and that made it incredibly difficult for us to train the 25 metre pistol event. Um, if you look at Rio, we had no pistol athletes uh, contesting there. The reason for that was, or certainly one of the reasons was, we didn't have anyone good enough because we didn't have anywhere to train. So with this world-class facility that the NRA and the British Army have kindly provided us, it's giving our athletes the perfect opportunity of developing their pistol skills over the next few years. Former Queen's Medal winner Johnny Moore, so a noted rifle shooter, is also part of the Army Pistol Team. Civilian or military, it's, um, I assume it'll be going on the higher end of the scores and that's how the team is well, generally picked. It's, a, it's an important part of the process of being picked for it. So, yeah, it's just producing the scores, getting the qualifying uh, scores 
sign and record at meetings and stuff and really take it from there. Of course, with Crown Exemption being in the Army, it's not been as much of an issue for us to train. However, Team GB you know, haven't had those facilities, so I believe that you know, that has um, you know, been an issue for, for us getting to Rio. Um, however, now with these facilities, I really believe that you know, it's, it's going to help um, with that, that journey um, and it's only going to make us um, just more determined to get there because you know we didn't manage to in Rio but it's still you know a dream for us so that's something we're going to to do. Right, our numbers are very restricted and out of that very small number um, we have to effectively cater for the men's Olympic rapid fire event the ladies 25 metre pistol event also known as sport pistol um, and of course uh, Disability Shooting UK um, they have one event that cut, falls under this category. At the Olympics this year we send five athletes for uh, the shotgun disciplines, one athlete for the uh, rifle disciplines but there were no pistol shootings and why is that? It's not that we haven't got the talent, we have got the talent but there's not been the facilities in this country. It's been bonkers that the uh, pistol ears have had to travel abroad for most of their, uh, their training sessions. And for the record, Team GB competed against the Army Pistol team and won, so well done to them. If you want to take up any of the Olympic pistol disciplines, start with Air Pistol. For more about shooting at Chelsmore, go to nra.org.uk. Well, that is a welcome shot in the arm for GB pistol shooting. Now let's have a look at what's going on at Bisley in the next couple of months. It's the Autumn Action Weekend next weekend, the 22nd and 23rd of October 2016. The last gallery rifle meeting of the year includes a practical pistol match as part of the NRA Handgun League. The Steel Buffalo on Stickledown Target 51 now has solar-powered speakers so you can hear it clang from your firing point. Ask at the range office if you would like to use it. Electronic targets are available on Buck 19 on Century at a new price of £10 per hour. At 100, 200 and 300 yards, different distances are available on different days. The CSR Winter League is underway. Short for Civilian Service Rifle, the league started at the beginning of October and continues through the rest of the winter. NRA membership runs the 1st of January to the 31st of December, so renewals are just a couple of months away. Direct debit is easy, and don't forget gift aid. Details on nra.org.uk. Next up, our report on the 2016 Trafalgar meeting. Have you got an odd-looking gun in your cabinet? Don't sell it or hand it in. Bring it to Bisley to meet other people with odd-looking guns for one of the biggest festivals of classic and historic firearm shooting in the world. It's the Trafalgar. From muzzle loaders or matchlocks to breech-loading nitro cartridge firearms, everyone is enthusiastic and has a story to tell about their gun. There's, I think there's over 200 individual competitions. It's, it's a historic meeting, the spirit of the original, that's the key ethos of it. So you can shoot modern reproductions, but they have to conform to what we would say is the spirit of the original. So turn of the century, turn of the 20th century, late 19th century, early, early 20th century. Uh, and what are you shooting today? Well, I am shooting a reproduction. It's, uh, it's a reproduction revolver. It's a Remington New Model Army. And this was made by a chap uh, on the south coast, Anvil Conversions. And he takes a reproduction um, Remington New Model Army, which comes from one of the Italian manufacturers, and he just does some work on them so that we can um, use these with the traditional cap and ball. But the difference is it uses nitro powder rather than black powder, so it's easier to work with. And instead of having the traditional nipples and um, percussion caps for the, uh, the, the uh, percussion, it's uh, shotgun primers. So it makes it much easier to, to handle and load, and it's a slightly different type of shooting. But because the revolver itself has the traditional sights on and you operate it exactly as you would have done in the late 1800s. I can compete in some of the competitions at this meeting. Um, black powder or, or, or uh, revolvers like this are okay. You can get good accuracy from them, um, but um, they're not the most reliable. They cannot be the most reliable of um, uh, revolvers or pistols. And we shoot ball, so from a ballistic um, perspective, it's not the most effective projectile going down range. So well, Trafalgar has been a uh, super and very busy weekend. We've had uh, beautiful weather on uh, Saturday, slightly challenging conditions on Sunday. 
a 200 odd uh, competitor so for competing in I think it's 202 uh, competitions so it's been a very busy weekend for us. There are shooting matches at Trafalgar on Stickledown, on Century and even on the running target ranges. Here is a museum piece built for rooks and rabbits in full operational glory in use on a wild boar target. This is a rook and rabbit rifle circa 1880-1870. Uh, the calibre is 32-20 uh, which when you, when you work out that it's a rook and rabbit rifle they must have had excellently large rooks and rabbits in the uh, in the days of, uh, of Queen Victoria because compared to what we shoot them with now you're shooting with quite a large uh, quite a large round when you consider when it's considered to be ready well first of all um, for the sighters yes you call when you're ready as soon as the bar appears come up follow it follow it through and if you've got a picture of the boar on the wall there, uh, the aim is somewhere round about the eye. Here is a man with his eye on another piece of British history. Museums and private collectors preserve our heritage firearms, but it is practical use by shooters with knowledge of these guns that brings them to life. And one of the liveliest parts of Trafalgar 2016 is the arms fair, where there are more than just antique guns for sale. And a cornucopia of bits and pieces, selling a variety of muzzle loaders, early 2-2s and cartridge weapons. The shooters have an enormous variety of uh, competition to shoot, then they have also uh, an arms where they can come in and see weapons, perhaps sell one, perhaps buy things, and stock up in consumables for winter months. Anything from muzzle loading musket to muzzle loading long range rifle to um, early cartridge weapons, it covers a complete um, array of weapons and it gives you a chance to shoot other guns at distances which is sometimes difficult to shoot elsewhere. When we run long range muzzle loading shoots here, we have French and Belgians and Dutch coming over to shoot here because they can't do it in their own country. Well for more about that and indeed anything in this show, please have a look at nra.org.uk. This has been NRA TV, we're back in a couple of months time, see you then.